Ladies and gentlemen, Cannon Lake. Do you want more processor cores? Well, the mainstream has definitely been crying out for more processor cores for some time, and indeed, it would appear that Intel's Cannon Lake, which is going to debut in 2017, will feature up to eight processor cores as well as coherent fabric. Now, the processor will be on a 10nm node, as we've known for some time. But first of all, how do we know that it's going to have uh, eight cores? Like, where do we have this information? Well, a chap who has been on LinkedIn has actually leaked this piece of information. The Intel engineer who joined Intel in August 2015, so around two months now, has, and I quote, been part of a converged core design organization working on Intel's cache coherency protocols and high speed fabrics. Intel's Canon Lake SOC integrates four slash six slash eight cores and converged, converged, excuse me, coherent fabric CCF, which acts like a north bridge. Now, that's quite interesting. Indeed, this actually closely matches the requirements of a recent job advert, which was seeking a coherent fabric architecture engineer. Now, do remember that Intel in the second half of 2016, this was during a Q2 2015 Intel's earning call by Brian Kranovich. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing that correctly. Anyway, he's the chief executive officer and director. Um, he said that they're going to be introducing in the second half of 2016 a third 14nm product which is known as KB Lake. Now it is built on the foundations of Skylake but there are several key performance enhancements and then in the second half of 2017 that's when they're going to be launching Cannon Lake. Uh, that's what their roadmap is at the moment. One will also notice that this does seem to really well um, be well timed I guess you could say with AMD because we know that AMD are going to be releasing Zen next year um, which has supposedly up to eight CPU cores which effectively have hyper threading um, and then Zen Plus is going to be released 2000 and 2017 uh, but there is some possibilities that it could be released in 2018. It's not 100% clear on that, so 2017 slash 18, I guess you could say, that Zen Plus is going to be introduced. But the most important point of that is Intel want to compete on core count. It's that simple. Am I looking forward to it? Well, the answer is hell yes. Obviously, we still have to wait some time to know just what the next generation KB Lake is going to offer compared to Skylake. But it's fair to say that the real biggie from Intel is definitely going to be Canon Lake. So if you upgrade, just for the sake of argument, to Skylake right now, you're certainly not going to be disappointed next year. As particularly when one considers that DirectX 12 games are going to be iffy. Now what, we know, what I mean by that is not that they're going to crash or anything like that, but if you read any interview or you discuss with any developer, and I have, um, the implementation of DirectX 12, it's not easy by which i mean yes some features are fairly easy like we've seen presentations at gdc and all of these various conferences that yeah it's not too bad to do certain bits on your game engine direct hits 12 however to really to really make use of it you have to go from the ground up you have to basically rebuild your engine you have to think completely and utterly parallel from the very first line of code that you put on screen. In other words, at the moment you start creating, creating your game, it has to be thought of as this is as wide as possible. And to be honest with you, this probably moves into console stuff as well. Um, and we can start seeing that with it, platform exclusives. The, you know, some of them definitely are leveraging multi-threading really well. Um, we've even seen that with, say, Infamous Second Son. It looks pretty damn impressive considering it's a launch game. So, in the next couple of years, maybe next year, we won't really see DirectX 12 games which are necessarily focused 100% on making full use of the hardware. Simply because some folks are going to still be running DX11 gear, despite the fact that most modern GPUs are going to be DX12. Developers aren't 100% committed to DirectX 12 yet. And I have a feeling that next year, 
we in the early part of 2016 we're going to still be seeing games which are DirectX 11 focused and DirectX 12 games which definitely do benefit running on DX12 um, on a DX12 machine but to really see the difference on DX12 and I was to really think oh my god look at them draw calls it's going to be 2017 slash 18 therefore by that point the number of CPU threads for gamers is going to become increasingly critical that's not to say once again that I'm advocating that you go out there and buy you know an i3 or something like that but I am saying for the intermediary you know next year let's say for the next year maybe 18 months once again the GPU is probably gonna remain the most important thing and single thread performance of your processor is probably gonna remain very important but from the perspective of gamers this is why Skylake is a really really good purchase at the moment because I, I still think the 6600k is probably a better buy in terms of cost than the 6700k. I've been reviewing them and I do actually believe that Skylake 6700k is a little overpriced compared to the 5820k but when one considers the price of a motherboard and when one considers the price of a 6600k and the extra technologies then it starts to become rather arguable of whether you know it's a good idea to upgrade to Skylake now then wait maybe one to two years and then jump on Cannon Lake for the sake of argument it's all kind of up in the air however this news is really exciting to me and I'm really really hoping it's true if it's not I would be rather shocked I'm pretty sure you would be as well I mean let's face it if Intel haven't jumped onto two into at least a six core minimum of six core by this time next year for the sake of argument and into an AMD have Zen even if Zen just for the sake of argument is 5% slower per core which it probably won't be but let's assume it is for the sake of you know why not factors for shits and giggles if Intel are two cores behind which is effectively four threads that's going to be kind of a big deal because even for non-gamers for those who are power users it's going to be really really tempting to say you know what i'm just going to go with zen because it's got better cpu cores this is all assuming once again that zen is not a big letdown i don't think it will be i don't think intel um are gonna be facing a lemon i think that amd are gonna have it pretty well nailed down this is from comments from amd this is just looking at the market I think it's going to be a very powerful process. I don't necessarily know, once again, if it's going to be able to compete with KB Lake in terms of IPC, in terms of single thread performance. Let's say KB Lake gives 100, just for the sake of argument, a reference of 100 points. Uh, Zen might give 95 and 90. I'm just guessing it could give 150 points for all I know. But assuming it even is a little slower than KB, by that point, you know, Zen's got all those extra cores, so I do think that Intel do need to start ramping up their core count. Therefore, I'm 100% convinced that this has a very good possibility of being quite genuine. Anyway, I think I've said a lot of words without really saying that much, so I think I'm going to call this video. But hopefully you've enjoyed it. I'm going to let you all go, but have a great uh, evening slash morning slash afternoon thanks very much for watching if you could do the subscribey likey thing i would greatly appreciate it i'll give you the internet cookies i don't have any cookies but you know i'm sure that google will give you a few anyway take care bye for now